swiftly on. Yeah, okay, guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And today we're not doing a drawing tutorial. We are doing a craft tutorial. We're going to be having a look at how to make a Viking shield. Now, the one I've made before I show you is a tad on the small side because it is made as if one of you guys are making it and you're not as tall as me. So, we're going to look at making something like this. Obviously, this would not be much help to me in a battle because it is far too small, but this is probably going to be about the right size for one of you guys. So, if you're interested in learning how to make one of these, then stick around and let's get crafting. Okay, so the first thing we need to do if we're going to make a Viking shield is we need to um, work out how big it's going to be and also um, get the right shape. So, we're going to go for a big circle um, Viking shield. So, the way you're going to make this. Um, shape is we're going to either use a piece of string if you've got string around or we'll use a piece of card. I'll show you both ways. Now to decide how big your shield's going to be, you want it to be about the same length as um, your shoulder uh, to probably about your wrist. That's probably how big you want your shield to be. So what you need to do is take a piece of string and you need to, you might need help with this, you need to measure from your wrist to your shoulder, roughly. And you need a piece of string that's about that long. So I'm going to cut that there. So you don't actually have to have string, it can be wool or anything really. And then all you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half, like that. And you're just going to tie these two end bits together. This would be for me, um, yours is going to be a lot smaller than this because you're not going to have arms as long as mine. So I'm not going to make one this big, I'm going to show you something that's a bit more, a bit closer to what I think yours probably will be size wise. So I'm going to go like that. Right, so next you're going to need um, two pieces of probably A3 paper. And if you don't have A3 paper, then you can just stick four bits of A4 together. Like that. One, two, three, four. That'll work absolutely fine. So I'm just going to stick these together with a piece of tape. And the middle doesn't particularly have to be perfect. It just needs to be stuck together. This is basically going to be our template. I'm going to flip it over so I don't want to be able to see the tape. Right, once you've done that, you're going to take this um, loop of string. That needs to be fairly strong in terms of this knot needs to be strong because you don't want it to fall off. And what you're going to do to draw this circle is basically you're going to get two pencils and one is going to go in the middle like this and you're going to decide where the middle of your shield is going to be so mine's going to be there and you're going to just hold your pencil like that and then you're going to get your other pencil and your other pencil is going to go oops this might be a good time to get a hand or get someone to help you if you're struggling for some reason I can't seem to do it <laughs> and you're going to push down in the middle like that and then this pencil is going to sit in the end and all you're going to do is without moving this middle pencil is you're going to draw around like this all the way around. The hard part is when you get to your wrist here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back around the other way and go like that. And there we go. You should have something that's fairly, fairly circular. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because when you um, cut out the cards and everything it's, it's probably going to end up having a little bit of a jaggy edge anyway. That's absolutely fine. So that is all you need to start. I'll try and keep that centre point, see if you can try and remember where that is for later on. Um, and then now we'll look at uh, cutting out our template. 
press, you're going to want to cut out this circle. Now cutting out circles definitely isn't the easiest thing to do. Um, but just remember to use the middle part of your scissors, not the end. You go around and either turn the paper as you go around. Take your time, I'm just trying to do this quickly because nobody wants to watch a video of me cutting out a circle for half an hour. Because that must be fun for anyone. Now, as I said, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It'd be better if it was obviously closer to being a circle, because it's going to help you with the shape of your shield. But, don't worry too much if it's got a few sort of maybe flat spots and it's not really perfectly curved. So I think that for a, for a child shield would be a pretty good size. For me, it'd be rather small, um, but obviously I'm a lot, a lot larger than you guys. So now we'll have a look at um, putting this onto the card and creating. Okay, so in an ideal world, um, you would have a massive sheet of uh, what we call corrugated card like this lying around from like an IKEA box or anything like that. So. I'm going to start by working with this, but I'll also show you how to do it if you don't have any card that is big enough. So I'll, I'll show you this first, and then we'll, I'll show you what to do if you don't have anything that's big enough for this. So I'm going to start by drawing on a template. It doesn't matter if you get a pen on this template because um, we're not actually going to. Oops, we're not actually going to use this template at the end. It's just. Obviously our template. So we're all around. And we're gonna do more than one layer card uh, because we only did one layer, it would be very, very flimsy and fall apart all very easily. So we're gonna do that. Try and fit, especially if you've got a big piece like this, see if you can fit um, a couple on there. I am probably only going to fit two on mine. It would be nice if it fits three. But I think I can't quite go off the space. I'm going to hold it up here. Let's flip it around. Much less. See, I don't quite have enough. There's going to be a little gap at the end. So, this is where I'm going to show you what you do if you've got um, a piece that's too small. Now if you've got a piece that's too small, what I would do is I would fold your uh, piece in half, mine's already quite nicely in half, I'm going to drink from the middle, and I would find a straight edge of card, or straight edge ish. What I would do is I would do it in two pieces, like this. Do one that there. Another half on the end there, like that. Now, if you don't have any corrugated cards, so the, the thicker cards, you can do this with thinner stuff like you talk, your pizza boxes and you know, Jaffa cake tubs and all that sort of stuff. It's just that you're going to have to do more layers, um, but it will, it will work. So, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut all of these out and I'll show you our next step. I do think probably one, two, three should be a decent amount to um, to make a shield that's fairly sturdy, but we'll find out in a bit. So you should now have something that looks a little bit like this. You'll either have maybe three full circles like this that are all the same, or you might have six pieces like this. I've cut one of mine in half so I can show you um, how I think you should uh, sort of do it. So, right, so before we start gluing this together, we need to um, have a look at a few other parts then. So, we we'll get rid of those and get rid of those and just have a look at the front. Now, what we need to do is find the middle, which I'm going to do using my template. So, you've still got your template, fold it in half, and then you can fold it in half again so it ends up being 
quarters. And then just put it onto your shield, like that. And then wherever the tip is of the triangle, that should be roughly the middle. It might not be perfect, but if I go around, it's pretty much going to be the middle all the way around. So in the middle here, we're going to have um, something to hold the boss, which would be made out of metal, and it would normally be half a sphere, which is obviously super tricky to make out of cardboard. Normally I'd probably do it out of paper mache, but for this um, I'm going to do something slightly uh, easier and slightly more basic. You could paper mache after, not a problem. So you need something circle to draw around, or you can do our trick with a piece of string. Uh, I'm going to suggest find like a roll of tape, because that's pretty much going to be um, the right size for your boss. So if you put it in the middle there, you can see it's a nice size. You can see there's still plenty of shield on the outside to um, decorate. So what you're going to need is some more cards. I'm going to put this inside. Uh, and I've got this, this is just off cut, so a scrap piece of card. And what you're going to need to do is firstly draw one that is the same as all the way around the tape. So it wants to be as big as the tape all the way around. After that, you're going to draw another one, but instead of going around the outside of the tape, you're going to draw around the inside of the tape, so it's going to be a smaller circle. Now the next one's trickier because you need to do one that's even smaller than that, but this is going to be too big now, so you can either take your string and do our little trick of drawing something a little smaller, or you can put the tape down, draw around the middle again, and just make it a little bit smaller by freehanding it. Like that. If you don't want to do this, you can try and find like a coffee, like a cup, sorry, not a coffee, like a cup or a mug or a glass or something that is smaller than the inside of the tape because you're going to need um, some different sizes so that it gets smaller because we're trying to make like a globe, a half a globe, half a sphere. So we're going to stick this on top of this and this on top of this. And then you're going to need one more that's probably a little bit smaller than that. Now, thickness wise, I think what we're going to need to do is make two of these, two of these, and two of these and then stick them all on top of each other and hopefully that'll make um, something like a sphere. So on this piece of camera I'm going to do the same, I'm going to draw one that's the same as the tape all the way around, one that's in the middle, and the last one I'm going to do the same. Freehand to make it a little bit smaller. And what to finish, all we're going to do is cut all of these out and we'll stack them up and we'll see what we're in for them. So I'm going to cut them out now. You now have um, your two bigger ones, two slightly smaller, and then your two small ones. If you've used a um, thinner card, like something that's a bit more like that sort of width, you'll have to obviously cut out probably a lot more of these, maybe like five of each, which would be a lot of cutting, but it'll be worth it because it'll give you um, a better look. So all we're going to do is stack them up like this, and that will sit in the middle of your shield and make your boss. Right, so I'm going to glue these together separately, so actually I'm going to do the boss first. All I've got here is PVA glue, um, it's nothing fancy, and a super old paintbrush, I don't have a really new one. But yeah, make sure when you are gluing these together, you glue all over it, otherwise it's just going to fall apart. Go 
when I use the PVA glue, I would suggest doing it on uh, an old table or on um, some newspaper. So we get on your carpet. Depending on where you put this, it might take a while to dry. When you do stick them together, you want to try and make sure that the gap is the same all the way around. So if you don't want to go off to one side, you want to try and get them nice and um, central. start by gluing these two on like this and then these two will go the opposite way. So I'm going to cheat a little bit actually to just to the edges. You really, really, really need um, to cover the whole thing. It doesn't want to be absolutely soaking wet with glue. But um, all the corners, well there isn't any corners, sorry, all the edges need to have glue right up to them. Otherwise it's not going to glue together very well, which means it's likely to fall apart. It's a bit annoying that you spend so much time sort of making it and then it just falls apart after a couple of days. So all the way up to the edges. Don't worry about getting to do anything is it is actually quite fun to take off the fingers once it's dry. These are going the opposite way, so these are going to go like that. Any, if you've got any labels or anything like that, make sure they're not facing out because you don't want to be able to see them. Really, I should have turned that the other way around, but I've already started sticking it. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find something heavy to put on top of here, and I'm going to leave it to dry. And whilst that is drying, 
I'm also going to show you how to design what goes on the front of the head. So both this and this need to be left to dry with things that are heavy on top of it. Make sure there isn't any glue coming out the edges because you don't want that to stick to whatever it is you use to help dry it. Also obviously if you put it near a radiator it'll probably dry quicker. But you can even use a hairdryer if your parents are happy with using a hairdryer. That might work too. Once that is dry, what you're going to want to do is just stick this in the middle of your shield. So it's, you're going to do a little bit of guessing really, um, but you need to try and get that as central as you um, can, so as close to the middle as you can. And as you can see, mine isn't actually quite dry yet. Yeah. So I'm going to do this quickly and then try and get some weight on it again. So I'm going to glue the middle. Again, make sure you put plenty of glue on, or it's just going to fall off. Which isn't what you want. And then you want to stick it in the middle, or where you think the middle is. And again, I would probably try and find something heavy to put on the top of there and allow it to um, all dry. We'll have a look at um, designing the front of our shield now. Right, okay, so whilst that's drying, you can have a look at making your design for painting your shield or colouring it in or whatever it is you're going to do. So, you, if you have still got your template, this is going to be a good time to use it. If not, just draw a circle on a piece of paper and practice on there. So, I'm going to take my um, tape and put it where the bottom is going to be because we're not going to be doing any designing on this little bit. So I'm just going to do that so I know that I don't need to draw my design on there. Uh, and I am going to keep my design really simple. Um, so I'm going to use this ruler and I'm actually going to use the width of the ruler to draw my design. So I'm going to draw, this is going to be a black line. It's going to go all the way up. Literally right the way across it. And that's going to be black. And then I'm going to draw, I'm going to have a line going this way, like a diagonal line going this way. symmetrical. Across, it's probably not going to look perfect and also this is actually just really on practice, it doesn't really matter too much. And I'm going to go, oops, up there, up there. I'm going to my first two lines and I'm going to do the same thing, just further up. pretty much all I'm going to do for mine. I'm going to paint um, these bits black. So all of this is going to be black. And these bits, so the rest of the shield is all going to be blue. Hopefully I'm going to build something like a sort of a, quite a light turquoise, kind of like this actually, like a teal, that's what I'm going to aim for, 
Um, once we have actually finished um, painting it, we potentially, and you don't have to, um, would add a ring around the edge because they would often have either a piece of um, uh, leather on animal skin or animal hide around the outside. So it's likely to be a ring like this all the way around it. We actually wouldn't, but we are going to paint that and we're just going to cut out another ring at the end and stick it over the top and paint that on. So by the end of it, it's going to look roughly like that. Well, that's the aim. So I'm going to do the middle, the boss is going to be silver. These lines for me are going to be black, this is all going to be blue, and right around the outside here, when I do that, I'll probably do that a brown colour. To put this onto our shield, so unfortunately, as you can see, mine has ended up going a little bit of a funny shape, because I weighed it all down but then I took all the weight off and I put it next to a radiator to dry it a bit quicker and now it's all gone a little bit apt. It kind of looks a bit like a Pringle now, but that's fine. I'll leave it under some heavy stuff and hopefully that will flatten it out. You should have something that looks roughly like this. And this template, we're going to draw this onto our shield. But before we do that, we are going to um, cut out and sort out the handle for the back. Um, so on the back here we're going to need uh, something to hold on to here and we'll also have a strap to put your arm through. So this is going to be super easy to make. <coughs> All you're going to need is um, some card. This can be a thinner card like this, like a little Mr. Kipling's tub. Um, and all you're going to need to do is just make it flat like that. And I am going to just cut a couple of strips of this like this. Like that and that. Now, with how long this needs to be, it needs to be long enough to go over your wrist and still be able to be stuck onto the shield. So, you'll see what I mean in a moment. That's anymore. I'm going to that. Remember, take the time with cutting. I'm only trying to do it quick um, so that you guys don't have to watch a video of me cutting out for an hour because no one really needs to see that. Have two bits like that, and what I mean is it needs to be big enough to be able to go over your wrist. Also, you need to be able to get your hand through. If you can't get your hand through it, then there's going to be a problem. If you go like that, and then you get stuck, you're going to rip it every time. So, all we're going to do is on our shield, is we will be sticking one here for your wrist to strap onto your wrist, but again it needs to be big enough for your hand to get through, and then we're going to have one to hold onto here. So we have one there, and the same thing there. So I'm going to stick this one on first. So I'm not sure whether or not I think it would be easier to stick these on first and then paint it, or paint it first. I'm thinking possibly it would be easier to paint it first. Um, so what I might do is put these to one side and we'll get cracking with uh, with drawing on and painting on this and then we'll add these afterwards because these should be quite easy. So put these to one side and let's flip it over and let's get cracking putting our design on. Now if you um, have done it on your original sheet like this you could cut the middle hole out, put it on and do it like that. I am just going to draw mine straight onto here because I've used this rule it should be pretty simple for me to do because I'm just going to aim down the middle like that and just draw oops, draw my design 
design on there. So there's a green that kind of kept it simple it's because it um, should make my video not quite as um, sort of long. That's going to be my skirt down the middle, pretty close to being down the middle. And then I need to do uh, two lines going up. So I'm going to try and make this symmetrical. Same thing to work out where my next one's going to be. So I'm going to paint that piece anyway, so you won't see any of these extra lines. So now I'm just doing this in pencil because we're going to be painting over it. I might do a bit of um, felt tipping on it on the end and go over it and make sure the lines are really nice. So I'm just going to get some paint out and I'm going to have a quick, um, quick go at painting this. So luckily I've already got um, the kind of blue that I'm after there. I haven't got a massive brush so uh, it might take me a while to do this and I might fast forward through it. Now if I were you and you were doing a design like this I would probably just paint the whole thing your background colour which mine's going to be blue and then come back in and when it's dry and go over with the black but I'm going to just so I can do it in one video I'm going to do it all at the same time so I'm going to try and just um, paint really neatly and um, really carefully so I might fast forward through this bit because we're going to come in with our blue colour because you paint on card you might need to do a couple of, um, a couple of coats I will leave it for a little bit longer and then go in with that. Ooh. 
Right, so you'll probably be able to tell from uh, looking through the camera that mine isn't quite 100% dry yet, but I think it is dry enough for me to do my black lines. So I'm going to come in now and um, go over these bits with black. I'm going to try really hard not to get black in the blue, but if it does, it's not a problem. We'll go back and we'll sort that out. Now I did actually do um, two layers, uh, two, two layers. I actually did two blocks of blue because I didn't like how it looked after I'd done just one. It, it just didn't look right. It looked quite um, wishy washy and not very, not very blue really. So I've done a couple of, um, a couple of layers of blue. Now, if you are doing something like this, this is the time to really take your time because I want these lines on mine need to be as straight as possible. Really difficult to paint straight lines with a paintbrush I find. If you do think you're going to find it really, 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 really tricky, you could always do this with um, a sharpie or a felt tip. Obviously you have to wait for all the blue to be dry, which is fine. It just take a little bit longer to, to finish. This bit is definitely the hardest bit in terms of painting. And I am not particularly brilliant at painting, unfortunately. But I do keep practicing and I know, um, painted up, done the black lines, uh, it's not perfect, it's uh, quite tricky like I say, especially when you paint on cardboard to get really nice um, straight and uh, clean lines, which is what um, I ideally would like, but I do still think it looks pretty good. So now we've got kind of two steps we can do, we can either do the lip around the end like I was um, saying earlier, or you could just put the handle straight on and away you go. I'm going to show you how to do the lip around the edge first, um, so if you're not doing that you can just skip ahead and look at putting the handles on, well, I think they're pretty um, straightforward to do, so we'll do that now. Okay, so for this step you're going to need an obvious card and you're going to need your template again. So what you're going to do is, again if you've not got this big sheet of card, do it in two halves, you can do it on separately, not a problem, won't make a difference, it'll still work. So I'm going to draw it on this template, pencil, I think 
Also, if you don't have your template anymore, you can use a string again. It actually, potentially could be easier with your string. Because the next step will be a lot easier. There we go. One minute. Right, so now I need to um, make a little border all the way around. Like I said before, so it needs to be a little bit thicker. All the way around. I've probably made about one of my fingers thick. Again, you could use a bit of string for this. Just make a slightly shorter piece of string. So you can play around all the way around like that. Have some points like that. And I'm going to cut all that out, all the way around. And then we're going to put around the middle so we'll put the ring. So do that. Right, so I've cut around the outside, I've still got our inner ring to cut out. There's a couple of different ways you could do this. Um, you can get one of your parents to help you uh, poke a hole in the middle and then cut from there, or we can just cut through the ring because that's going to be glued on anyway. Keep cutting in. And then we can start cutting around there. Yeah. Might even be easier to cut the whole thing in half and just stick it on in two pieces. I think that might actually be the easiest way to do it. So if you do that, and then just cut this out like that. Now, this piece might end up being a bit curvy like that because what you're doing is you're kind of flattening out all of the, the bumps that are normally in corrugated car. So it's not going to be as flat, but it's fine because we're going to glue it on. So it will flatten itself out. That's in the one half. Keep that and use that for something else another day. And we'll do the same on the other side. Again, when you're cutting this, make sure you are using this part of the scissors and not the end. If you're trying to use the ends, you will never be able to cut through um, corrugated cards, it just won't work. But just see I'm struggling with these scissors. I don't think they're all that sharp. Don't struggle bro. this is still wet because if it's still wet you're not going to be able to put anything down on it to weigh it down because when you glue this on you are going to need to um, weigh this down otherwise it's just going to come straight off you're going to glue it and it's going to end up just not sitting it doesn't matter what glue you use unless your parents have a hot glue gun and they're using it and helping you in which case this will be really easy it's just going to be hot glue putting it on but with PVA gluing it on it's going to take quite a while to dry, so you're going to need to weigh it down with something like we did when we glued it all together. So, I'm going to glue it on now with our PVA glue. Hopefully, my glue has sort of started to dry because I left it out overnight, which you should never do. Because all that happens with PVA glue is it's all sticky and tacky and not in the way want I glue onto the back of the piece that you're gluing on, not on the piece that you're gluing on to. Make sure you put glue all over it 
I said before, otherwise it'll just fall off. But you don't want to absolutely lather it, you don't want it literally dripping wet with glue. But you need to have enough of it to be able to actually stick it on. If you have any um, clothes pegs from like your washing line, you clip those on and that would work really well to hold this onto the edge. I don't unfortunately yet because I've just moved into a new house. However, I will find a different way of doing it. Do the same on the other side, and like I say, you can weigh it down. make sure it's not something that I'm worried about maybe getting a bit of paint or glue on and it's still wet. So I'm going to use some really expensive books and I'm now getting glue all over the table which is why you should put newspaper down or make sure that me you are on the table which you do not use for anything like heating or the glue that you work on. Okay, so uh, whilst you were not watching, I have painted the ring brown and I've also gone in with not a lot of paint on my brush and I've just gone across to make the shield look a little bit older, a little bit muckier, a little bit sort of uh, maybe battle damage and like it's wood. So once we have finished all this, I probably will go across with a ruler and possibly do some straight lines to make it look like planks of wood. You don't have to do that. We do have to attach these up. So, now all that is dry, I can flip it over and you can look at attaching these. So like I said, we're going to attach one to hold on to. So I put one on one side and we're going to attach it about there, which means that mine, you know what, we're going to leave it the same length. What I'm going to do though, that's about right for me, is I'm going to mark just where I'm going to attach it just so I can remember. And I'm just going to stick some glue down there. Blue, like that. PVA glue down because sticky tape does not stick very well to cardboard. I'm going to put quite a bit on here though just to hold it for the time being. Glue. And 
again and your parents do have a hot glue gun and they're helping you, this would be a good time for them to use that because it will definitely make the handles a lot stronger. This glue will work fine, it's just it's going to take a little bit longer to dry, so you have to be a little bit more patient. So you do want to try and get these nice and secure. Do wait until the glue is dry. Because this is the bit that's going to be taking the sort of the strain of your wrist and holding up the shield and everything. Also trying to do this with PVA glue you need to have any duct tape around the house that would work a lot better as well but again you need to ask your parents if you're going to use that don't just go taking the duct tape because one day they might say where's that duct tape gone and you're going to like where did it go where's that duct tape gone and you're going to like well I know I've already to make a shield I'm not sure they'll be very pleased Obviously this shield is far too small for me, but for you guys it's probably about the right size. I hope you enjoyed having a go at making a Viking shield. You end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now if you've enjoyed making one, if you've had a good go at making one, please do feel free to ask your parents to send me a picture of the shield. I'd absolutely love to see them and I might be able to feature them, which would be really cool. So until next time, keep on crafting.